Hello and welcome to the Visual Web Developer introduction video. Over the next 30 minutes we're going to show you how to create a pretty full featured customer login portal for a fictitious company called Northwinds. And this will have a lot going on. There's database access, a login system, site templates and navigation, and even custom user settings. If this is your first time um, using Visual Web Developer or ASP.NET 2.0, you're going to be in for a treat. There's lots of features that we have to show here, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So here we are in the tool, and I'm going to start by opening a new website. Now, in the past, in ASP.NET 1.1, you're pretty much limited to working only with the Internet Information Server. But with Visual Web Developer and ASP.NET 2.0, you can work directly with the file system. So in addition to support for IIS, which I don't even have installed on my computer, that's not going to stop me. I can work with my local file system. I'm going to create a project called Lanai, which is named after my favorite Hawaiian island and the first thing it creates for me is nothing which is great there's no code lurking behind the scenes there's really nothing we, we're starting with an empty page so let's create our first page since this is all about um, having a customer view their orders my first page will be called orders.aspx now ASP.NET supports multiple languages um, and that's on a per file basis not a per project basis I'll keep it with Visual Basic and also we can put the source code for our pages in a separate hidden or behind the scene file I'm gonna keep it within the page because we have such little code to show you um, for this entire project I'll keep it as is so now what's popping up here is my HTML editor. Now the HTML editor is vastly improved in Visual Web Developer 2005. We've got full IntelliSense support. So as I'm typing, we've got all the HTML support. Um, if I type in something arbitrary like the, uh, like the bullet point, so item 1 and then line item 2. If I do some kind of arbitrary formatting, like I'll just put some spaces around here and then switch to the design mode it shows you what it's going to look like on the page but if I make some changes here like put something um, welcome here how about view your orders and change that to a heading tag if I switch back to source mode it preserves my formatting so if you have carefully crafted or handcrafted HTML going back and forth between the designer you're going to be safe um, if I do want to give it a nice kind of default formatting I can simply hit control KD and it'll put all in a nice format a few other things to notice, we have XHTML transitional support. We can switch browsers and that will limit the HTML uh, that, that will, it will validate against. There's really a lot going on here. Let's, um, let's go ahead and save this and s strip out some of, the, um, some of the text here. Okay, so this, because this is about orders, we need an order database. To do that, I'm going to add a new special folder that's managed by ASP.NET called the App Data Folder. Now it's empty, it's just a folder, but if I go back to some of my files here, this is where I have some ingredients for this demo, I'm using the standard Northwinds database that you can get directly from Microsoft. Uh, this is an access database, but because we have SQL Server Express installed, I can go ahead and drop it into that folder and double click on it to see the details. So inside here I have all my tables, but it's probably better explained through this database diagram I made. So we're building a page to show the customer orders, but each order has some details associated with it. We'll also create a customer page that will allow the administrator to view all the customers in the system. So we have a couple pages going on and several bits of data here. So I'll close that. Now to get the customer data into this page, let me switch to design mode and go to the table and just drag the orders right onto the page. Now in the past, simply executing a query to return the data and showing it, it was a little bit of code. Here, it's generating some, some markup code for me behind the scenes here, but let's just go ahead and see what it looks like. Now, this is way too much. It's showing, first of all, every customer and every order, and it's way too wide. So let me make a few changes to it. If we switch back to the design mode, you can see that when I drag the table onto the page, it created two controls. The first is this grid view, and the grid view is worthy of a five-hour demo in and of itself. There's so much going on here. Um, I'm going to tell it to automatically generate my columns from this SQL data source. So this is where we make the attachment to the database. This is where we view it in the grid view. So let's make a small change to our, our database query. 
Now when I dragged the database into my system, it automatically added a configuration string in my web config file. This special data directory, it's pointing to my Northwinds database. That makes it very easy to deploy this site just with files. I don't have anything special to install. On the next page here, let's modify the query. Instead of returning everything, I'll just pull back the order, the customer, the, sh the order date, and maybe the freight. Now, because this will pull back every customer, I'm going to modify it to only pull back those customers that are specified by a query string in the URL. So if I put customer ID here at the top and add that, let me show you what it looks like. See, it generates this query a where clause for me automatically. And then I need to refresh because my query changed. Let's save it and view this in the browser. Now by default, I'm not going to get anything. I have to go and put customer ID. You can see I've tested this. Alfki, ALFKI happens to be one of our customers. But now you see that query is easily parameterized by um, an option on the command line. Great. So let's go a little bit deeper. Let's imagine now we want to click on one of Anton's orders and view the details. So we have a nice little master detail. If I go by going to the end of the project, let me switch to source mode. I'll go to the end here and add some space. I can bring up my toolbox. Now there's a lot more here than if you're used to ASP.NET 1.1. In addition to all the standard controls we have at the top, Microsoft has grouped the data components, the navigation and validation all together in their own little areas. So I'm going to drag on the grid view directly. And by default it's not attached to any data, so I need to attach it to a new query and we're going to use the database, but notice we could be doing queries against a middle tier business logic layer, or we can go directly to an XML file. In fact, this entire model is extensible, but I'm going to st stick with the database query for now, using the same database connection string, but this time we want data from the orders table. I'll need the order ID, the product, the price, quantity, that's fine. And I'm going to parameterize this query as well, because I only care about the orders that come from the control. So instead of query string, we want the orders that come from the control grid view one, which is the one above us. So far so good. Let's finish that. Now I have two tables on, on the uh, page. I need to make one last little change to the top one. I need to enable selection. So when I click the select hyperlink, it's, it's going to refresh the page. I need to provide one more bit of information. It needs to know what columns to pass. So if I turn on the data key names and tell it the order ID is the key. And save it and view this in the browser after I pass it some data. So I can select order 10692 and it shows me the details below. So we have master detail with no coding so far. Let's go a little bit further. Let's add a page to view all the customers in the site. So I'm done with orders for now. I'll go back to the solution and add a new item this time called customers. I'll switch to design mode and drag in the customer table like I did before for orders. But I'm going to turn a lot more stuff on. I'll turn on paging and sorting and editing. I'm going to add a new column for hyperlink. And this column is uh, view orders. And this will link that customer to that particular customer's orders and the URL for that hyperlink is coming from the customer ID and I'll just send that over to the orders page. Let's see what else can I do. There's uh, so many features again like I said in the grid view I can turn on um, enable sorting and paging callbacks and this is for higher level browsers. This will allow me to change all the sorting and paging without visible refreshes. So Let's see what this guy looks like. So watch, I can sort, and paging works, and I can drill in to an edit, say Rancho Grande, and hit update. So I've got inline editing, and finally my orders hyperlink goes straight to that particular user ID. This is great, so we've got two pretty full featured pages. Let's move on to the next piece I want to show you. Okay, let's make this thing look a little bit better. We have something called themes in ASP.NET 2.0. Themes are collections of style sheets and JPEG images and things like that. I have some themes that are all ready to go that I hand built. 
um, called Hilo and Lanai, and I even have a view for what this thing would look like on a cell phone. 